come on stage real. <laughs> Good morning. We welcome you virtually to Mass today. We hope that you have been enjoying the Mass on um, virtual. I hope you've been enjoying it, and we're glad that you do join us. The Lord brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of rejoicing. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothed with blessed immortality, those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then, when they saw the man who had been cursed, cured, who had been cured, standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let, them, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in his name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God.
for what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give you thanks, Lord, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior, the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give you thanks to you, Lord, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, Lord, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. I will give thanks to you, Lord, for you have answered me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and in your lips, that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been risen. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd just like to make a comment before I begin on the entrance that we had. The Lord brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of rejoicing, hallelujah. That reminded me of what I've seen on TV this past week, where individuals have been cured of the coronavirus and they're being wheeled out of the hospital and there are lines of nurses and doctors and others along the way cheering and clapping. What a wonderful sight that is and that's what I was reminded of when I read that during the week and read it today. What a beautiful sight, people rejoicing, hallelujah, hallelujah, we can say that over and over again. In the gospel today, if you have noticed, Jesus appears to a woman. In other gospels, he appears to the women first. But today he appears to Mary Magdalene, out of whom 
he drove seven demons. Mary was relieved of her sinful life, and she opened her heart completely and entirely to Jesus. She loved him immensely, and she was willing to hear and to see, and she went searching for him, as we'll see in another gospel during the next week or so. Finding Jesus, and Jesus rewards her. But then we come to the disciples. When she runs back and she tells the disciples she has seen Jesus, they don't believe her. And then two disciples, maybe not apostles, walking along the road, have a session with Jesus. And we read about that later in the Acts also. And they run back and they tell the disciples. And the disciples don't believe them. How come? They're telling the truth. They're telling what they have experienced. But you know, there may be something in the disciples that we can find in ourselves in a certain way. We're special. Jesus should have appeared to us first, not to the women and not to those two disciples. He should have come to us first. That's why they had a hardness of heart. That's what Jesus was addressing to them. Jesus appears everywhere. And if we go back to that entrance hymn where people are being wheeled out of a hospital in our sense, Jesus is there appearing there. We look for Jesus wherever it is possible that Jesus could be, where the presence of God could be. That's what we look for. And we open our hearts to that presence. It doesn't have to be to us first, doesn't have to be Catholics first and then everyone else. It only has to be God appearing wherever God and his son want to appear. It's their life. It's their decision, not ours. So let us begin to open our hearts and our eyes to seeing God everywhere. Seeing him in plants, seeing him in trees, seeing him in everyday life. If you're experiencing God that way, then we're opening our hearts to the risen Lord. And then the decoration or the command at the end of the gospel can apply to us. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel. We will now have the prayers for the faithful. For the disciples of Christ in every community of believers, across all churches and denominations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For pastors, preachers, catechists, and youth ministers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For theologians, scripture scholars, and all who promote Christian unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who battle the demons of injustice and prejudice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister to the sick and the grieving, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who proclaim the gospel by serving the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who wait in death for the resurrection that we proclaim, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for Kamei and for all those people who are suffering from cancer. And we pray for the families who have lost individuals to cancer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray also for all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we offer you our prayers. We ask you to receive them, to grant them to us and to those of whom we pray for. 
We ask for an answer to all viruses, to answer of all diseases, and we answer for the, for the scientists to work hard as they are doing to relieve all the possible suffering in the world by developing new, new vaccines and new drugs to help us. And we ask this through your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. And pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewed constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life, and therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy. <coughs> remember, remember also <coughs> our brothers and sisters <coughs> who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, <coughs> and all who have died in your mercy. <coughs> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, <coughs> and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> and through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, <clears throat> you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. <clears throat> <clears throat> Look what kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and I'd just like to say to you that now, with all the staying in the house and being inside, I'm beginning to realize how dogs feel when they look out the window and they see something out there or when they want to go for a walk. I think this week, this week I think I baptized, I, <clears throat> I barked at a squirrel. I messed that up, didn't I? But have a good day. <laughs>